iOS 7 Beta 2 is now out, and aside from a couple of minor improvements, you now can also install it on the iPad. Now, the biggest question that everybody's asking is, is there really anything to be excited about here? So, let's find out. I'm Jaime Rivera, this is Pocket Now, and this is our hands-on iOS 7 on the iPad. If you're familiar with our video of iOS 7 Beta 1, the differences between Beta 1 and 2 are very minor, except for the fact that there are some performance improvements that you can barely see. It does seem a little faster, but it still has trouble understanding gestures every now and then. And aside from that, the other improvement that you do get is that you now get the voice memos back, which were lost after Beta 1. And well, all you're getting is actually a redesigned version of the application, but not necessarily something better, just a less skew-morphic UI, if you could actually call it that way. Now, for those of you that were expecting any dramatic differences in iOS 7 on the iPad, I'm sad to disappoint you. This is still the same blown up version of iOS from the iPhone on a bigger canvas. So you can still slide from side to side. Now you can swipe down just like you can on the iPhone to get search instead of going to the left, which is significantly better than before. And you'll notice that you still get this textured keyboard that adapts to whatever background you have, just like you can in the iPhone. And on the iPad, you can still separate the keyboard. You can still move it up and down. Some of the icons, like for example, this keyboard icon on the bottom looks terrible. I think there are probably some design enhancements that are still in the works, and it does to other portions of the iPad, there does seem to be more work to be done here. I'll give you one example. Let's go into the music application. So, for example, if you go into the music application on the iPhone, let me try to move into it right now. Notice that you get the normal UI when it's portrait, and then when you put it on landscape, you get this nice cover flow version or cover tile version of what music is now, and if you try to do the same thing on the iPad, you all you get is the same list. It doesn't vary, it doesn't enhance, you can go into songs, you can go into gen genres, you can go anywhere, and you do not get a better version of the music application, which is odd since the music application on the iPad on iOS 6 was actually superior to what it is now on iOS 7. And I'll give you another example. We can go into calendar, for example, and let me go into the calendar on the iPhone and you'll notice that on the iPhone there is very efficient usage of the canvas. You can, you have your dates, you have everything, but if you do the same thing on the iPad, you go to the day view, you'll notice that everything is wider, but it's not more efficient. There is a lot of space to do more here and still this doesn't adapt to the left and you don't get uh, something better at the right. It is just a very lean and extremely white version of the same application. So if you ask me, was it better back when it was skeuomorphic? I'll say that it was better. I do believe that there is still a lot of work to be done this beta 2, and I don't feel that these are final applications. The photo application does seem to be finished. You can go into collections and do the same things that you can do in the past with iOS 6. It doesn't vary there, so I don't think that there will be any major enhancements here. For example, you go into the camera application and here you get the same features that you get on the iPhone. You can still slide for photo, for video. You don't, you get square options. I still don't find the option to actually be able to enhance the photos with different uh, scenes. So it does seem that this will be exclusive to the iPhone or it could probably be just not available for this particular iPad. Remember the iPad mini is more of an entry level tablet. You go into contacts again, here you do get a pane on the left and the pane at the right, which is fine, but no major enhancements, just a wider version of the skeuomorphic UI that existed before. And well, the only difference back then was that that was grayer than this, so I can't really call it better. Another enhancement is the fact that Siri gets a new voice, but let's listen to it. How many kilometers are in 23 miles? That. 23 miles converts to about 37 kilometers. Now, hopefully you noticed this. It sounds like if the voice has a little more pitch, but then it's still Siri's voice. 
um, just different, and, but it doesn't sound any more natural like, for example, you do get on Google's voice search now on Android. And notice the UI. If I had to compare this to the skeuomorphic UI that we had before, uh, the skeuomorphic UI was better presented. This text that's being highlighted doesn't look any better or more readable than it looked on the previous version of how Siri handled everything. And yeah, I am going to complain about the fact that we get Bing for search. One that does annoy me a lot is the notes application. Look at it. It looks extremely white and this yellow text looks extremely annoying as well. Let me try to go into all of iCloud. Let me look into one that has a link and notice you have this yellow text. You can barely read it. And for those of you that think that this is not skeuomorphic, well, they got rid of the notepad yellow, but this texture looks white actually, like white paper, like real paper. So it is skeuomorphic and th these yellow links are honestly terrible. It does seem like if this version on the iPad needs more work. Reminders is just an overlay of whatever is at the bottom, but it looks exactly like it did in the past without the texture. Again, going back to the same problem. Photo booth, again, just a different UI. You can take your photograph and you can't really enhance it in any way. So there is really nothing significant here to show. Game Center takes a lot of time to load. There does seem to be a lot more work coming here, but it does look again just like a blown version of the iPhone with no really major enhancements. Notice how long it took to load and then you can just touch it and it'll give you different options for Game Center. Nothing really out of the ordinary. Sadly, I haven't loaded any magazines for newsstand just yet to show them to you. Some of them are really crashy on the iPhone, so I don't think it's even worth it to show. Going into the stores, for example, if you go into the iTunes store again, all we're getting is a less gray version of what we had on iOS 6, on the iPad at least. Nothing really significant. You can still flip through everything here. Nothing was really enhanced. In the clock version, again, you get rid of the uh, Swiss clock style clocks that they had before and they got sued for nothing really major in these changes it just looks whiter not different just whiter and even though there are changes in the messaging application i'm sadly not able to show it to you here you now get uh, photos of your contacts on group messaging by by the way it's not for every message just group messaging nothing major here as well you go into the settings app and again this is just the wider and greener version of something that already existed in gray before Nothing really significantly better. We go into Safari and you do get the same tabs. You do get the same full screen way to load the website. It is, you know, interesting that it doesn't recess to the top as it does on the iPhone. I'm probably waiting for this to come in a future version. Let me see, we add new tabs and you do get the tab browsing. Let me see how fast it can load pocket now over Wi-Fi. This is an iPad only, this is a Wi-Fi only iPad, so it's taking a little bit to load the images, but it doesn't stutter while you're navigating. Let me see if multitasking gestures work. Yes, they do. You can still do a four finger swipe to the top to multitask. It is better than the iPhone in detecting swipes. It is, but so far, it, I can't really consider it to be better than the iPhone. Now, for those of you that are rocking an iPad 2 or an iPad mini, you will be disappointed. If you want to launch an iPhone application on this thing, sadly, you're not getting any enhancements, meaning everything still, all text looks jagged. Um, it does notice, it does seem that it's not enhanced for the iPad like you do get on the Retina Display iPad. And that's really sad because you can jailbreak your iPad and get this problem fixed, but you can't do it on the native version of iOS. And then if you go into third party applications like YouTube, which is made by Google, everything works as it should. Like if it was working on iOS 6, obviously these applications will probably be enhanced in the future for the iPad, depending on how skeuomorphic they were. Again, iOS 7 on the iPad is uh, different. Um, you get Control Center at the bottom. Notice that it is a little more minimalistic than it was on the iPhone, meaning that the icons are lower but not really better. Another change is notice that Notification Center now bounces at the bottom instead of just staying there. That was something that was not available on Beta 1, but 
do you want me to consider this better or worse? Um, again, it's just different. So bottom line, iOS 7 on the iPad is something that you're going to get. It'll probably make the iPad work better as the betas progress eventually, and we will keep you posted on these changes. But so far, iOS 7 Beta 2 does not seem to be any significant improvement uh, to what we had before. And in the case of, for example, the music application, I would call this like two steps back to what we had before. But we will keep you posted again. This is pre-production software. It'll probably be enhanced in the near future. That's it for today's hands-on. Thank you very much for watching. I am Jaime Rivera. Be sure to follow us on your social network of choice and also give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Thank you very much for watching.